In polymorphism, the next thing we're going to talk about is operator overloading. And to understand that, let me just go back here and create a new file. And I will say this is opa.py. Just wanted to have some small names for the file so that I can type it easily. So what we're going to do is very simple. We'll create two variables. Let's say a is 5 and b is 6. And then we are going to add them, which is a plus b. And then you'll be saying, hey, we have done that in the first video or maybe in the earlier videos. Why we are talking about this? Uh, I will get to it. But before that, I'm going to print c. And let's move to that folder. OOP, clear it. And let's run this now. So Python opa.py. And once we got the output, you can see we got 11. And that's what I was expecting. But the question arises: how exactly this plus is working. Now, plus behaves differently in different scenarios. Example, when you say a plus b, when both are integers, it's basically adding them. But let's say if I make this as a string, now both are string. And then still we can use plus here. And let's see what is the output. Now, when we use them as integers, we were getting 11. But now when I use them as a string, we are getting 56. So something is different, right? So we got the same operator, but as the operands are changing, the type of the operands changes, it changes the behavior. Now that is what is called operator overloading. So based on its operands, the behavior changes, right? So that is polymorphic. So it's one thing, but behaving differently, right? So one thing, many forms. That's polymorphism, right? Okay, but then let's understand how it is working, how that plus is behaving differently. Now, what happens is when you try to add two numbers, this five and six, both are objects, right? Yeah, we know it's int type, but they are of type integer class or int class. And we have seen that before. So if I try to print the type of this A, it will be saying class type int. So what is happening behind the scene? Now, since it's a class, what I can do is I can just comment this part and let's rewrite this C again. But this time I'm going to use int as a class. And you can see on this screen it says class int. Now it's a class, so it will have some methods to work with. And when I say underscore underscore, there are a lot of magic methods here. So all these underscore methods are magic methods. Uh, and we got one of the method here is called add. So if I use this add method, which takes two parameters, because of course, if you want to add two things, you have to pass as, a, as, as two parameters. So I'm going to pass A and B and let's see what it does. Let's run this and it again gives you 11. So even if you do this operation or if you do this way, both are giving the same output is because both are same. You will say, hey, they are not same. We are using plus here and then we got add here. That's a method. How? Why you're saying it is same? They are same is because even if you say plus behind the scene, Python will do this. Okay, that is your syntactic sugar. This is what you want to do, but you do this just to make it more readable. Otherwise, if this was compulsory, then a lot of people would have left Python for some other languages, right? So this is what we use, but this is what is happening behind the scene. Now, going forward, if you're thinking, hey, we are going to use this every time you want to add, please don't do that. You're messing up with the readability of the code. So this is what you have to do. I'm just trying to make you understand this is what it is working with. Now, if you click on add, you can see it takes two parameters. One is the self and second is the value. Now in this, A is the self and B is the value. That means you can also write this statement something like this. You can say A dot underscore underscore add and you can pass B. And we have talked about this before when we were working with computer class where you can call a method with a class by saying class dot method name and then you can pass the object or you can use the object name to call the method. Both are same, right? So this is what it is doing. So once we understand this, let's try to write our own class and see if we can do that. Can we just do this operator overloading on our own class object because we are using int class which is inbuilt. So what I can do is I can create a class called account which is like a bank account. So in a bank account, you will be having multiple fields like your username, your name, uh, your bank account number, your balance, the type of account and location, multiple things, right? To simplify, I will go with two things, the name and the balance. Just keep it simple. And to do that, I'm going to create the init method so that I can define those variables. And this is going to be instance method. So I will say self and I'm going to create two variables. One is the name and second is the balance. But I want to assign the values to it when I create the object. So of course I have to accept it here, name and balance. 
and let's assign name and let's assign balance whatever you get from the uh, object creation what i'm saying is when you create the object let's say the first user i will say user one the first user has an account now we have to pass two things here one is a name so let's say it's my account and then let's say the balance in my account is thousand now this can be rupees dollars or bitcoins imagine thousand bitcoins anyway so user two and then we'll create account now this is for my wife so i'm going to say kiran and let's say this is two thousand so that's the balance in my in our account okay so we got two accounts here one for naveen one for kiran and now let's do the operations first of all i want to do one more thing before i talk about add so let me print user one now you tell me what will happen in fact i'm not just just going to print user one i'm going to print the user two as well now when you do this when you try to print the users this is what it will do it will say the type of the object which is account type so account object at this location and account object at this location so we got two objects on different locations my intention was to print the values not the address how do i print the values you can do that you can say user one dot uh, name user one dot balance you can do this but if you just want to print the object and you're expecting it will give you the values we can do one thing to understand this let's go back up and now here if you take this variable a and when you try to print the value of a will it print the object something like this by saying int object at a location let's see if you run this it actually prints the value it's not printing object at this location and it thinks an object right it's, it's an object still it is printing value how it is printing value because by default every time you try to print the value it calls a method which is inbuilt method which is called str this is the method which is getting called and that's why you are getting that value so even if i write that method and run you will get the same output so my i'm proving my point that even if you call a it is going to call this method now what this str method does is it's like a string method which returns the value of that object so when you say click here it's an inbuilt method but we can't see the definition but it returns the value of integer so what if i come back here user one dot and if you say str you can see we, we do have this method in build and the way you can check that is by running it no error that means yes this method is in build even if you don't mention that here it's there from where you are getting this method you're getting this method from the object class and the default behavior of the object class is to print this i don't want to print this i want to print the values so what you can do is you can do something called method overriding which we're going to see in the next video and i'm going to say str this is going to be an instance method i don't know why i said static so this is an instance method and what we are going to return is the value right and i want to print that in a particular format so i'm going to use f and if you want to print a particular format you can use f but then in the single code you have to define your variables in the curly brackets so the variables i have is uh, self dot name and then you can give a space and again you can put self dot balance if you want you can give a colon in between so that you can differentiate them now what we are doing is we are defining our own str and run you can see we got the values so for the user one i'm actually calling str so it makes sense to print this but for the user two i'm not even saying call str but as i mentioned before every time you try to print the object it will call the str method and for the user one also i don't want to do that now it should call automatically clear run and it works perfect uh so let me just comment this part now and also comment this let's focus only on the account now so what we are doing is we are overriding the behavior of str but the video is not about overriding the video is about operate overloading so what i'm going to do is let's say i want to know what is our combined balance so i will say combined equal to i want to say user one plus user two maybe we want to buy something and we are not sure if will it be enough so we'll combine both the balance to see can we really afford it so we'll say combine equal to user one plus user two and i want to print the combined and the type of data which you should get from combined is the account object right but if you do this it will give you an error it says you can't use plus here because these are these are objects but we have used plus here and this were the objects so you think what can be done when we said plus we were actually calling add method 
and it's not there in our class. That's the issue. It's not even there in the object class. So what we can do is we can create a method called add, which will take two parameters. One is self for sure. The second one is we can name it as other, or you can say value, your choice, but self, other makes sense. Me, you, right? I mean, we can do that. It's me and you. And then we can return the type of account by passing two data. One is the name of the account. I will say this is a combined account or join account. And then the value is the addition of our both of the balance. So I can say me dot balance plus you dot balance. And that should work, right? Let's try it out. And it worked. Okay, so what we are doing is when you say plus here, it is going to call the add method. Earlier it was not there. Now we have it, which will take two parameters. One is this, one is this. Now why this is me is because I am adding my balance with the user too. So that becomes you. Uh, but then this is not a good names to use. We can we should say self and other because this is what you will see on the internet. So I don't want to confuse you with those names, me and you, but self and other makes sense. And with those variables, it still works. Okay, that's what is called the operator overloading. The same operator, but behaves differently based on what operands you pass. So that is operator overloading comes under polymorphism. Uh, but we can do one more thing. Let's say we are going for a dinner and uh, who should pay for the dinner? So if I want, I don't want to pay, I will basically go to wash my hands, right? But nowadays in restaurants, they give you the bowl where you can wash your hands. Uh, it's tricky. But let's say we'll decide on that particular day, on that particular moment, whoever has a good balance or greater balance, they will pay for the bill or they will pay the bill. So I can check if user one is greater than user two. Now, this is tricky because you're not comparing the balance. What could be easier is by saying user one dot balance is greater than user two dot balance. It will be much easier because you're comparing the numbers and you can compare the numbers using greater than symbol. We have seen that before. But now what I'm doing is I'm actually comparing the objects. Let's see if this works. Uh, if this works, it should print Naveen pays the bill. If not, else Kiran pays the bill. Okay, but if you do this, it will give you an error because you can't compare two objects. How do I do it? Now, in this case, we have to overload this particular operator and you can do this. So in the integer as well, we got different functions. Example, if I uncomment this, I'm uncommenting A so many times, I should have uncommented it before. Uh, you can see we got all these magic methods, right? We got add and so on. And few methods are like equal, greater than, equal to. This is greater than GT. Then we got LE, which is less than, equal to. LT, which is less than. So we can use all this. We can also got multiplication and so on. There's so many, so many methods here. So what we can do is we can overload one of the methods, which is def, GT, which is greater than. And this will take again two parameters, self and other. And you just have to return self.balance is greater than others dot balance then whoever has a bigger balance will return true is self is greater it will return true then that means Navin pays the bill if it is false Kiran pays the bills or pays the bill yeah let's try and the answer is Kiran pays the bill but let's say I got some amount from somewhere let's say 4000 my account balance updated and now you can see it says Navin pays the bill so that is your operator overloading in Python same operator, but depend upon what are the operands, it will behave differently. So that's it. See you in the next part.